Today on Toy Domination, we're going to cover some of the upgrades and overhaul I did for this 118th scale giant ship. Two years ago, I made a base for my USS Flag. A year after that, I added two decks on the top. And that's when all the problems started. When you start making mac and cheese and suddenly you switch to chicken noodle soup, you're going to have a hot mess when you're done. So when we moved this year, I wanted to make the changes to the ship and do an overhaul. What I found when I include this video is what I thought would be the right changes to fix the problems turned out to plot twist, not work. Much like this deck, the ship's still a hot mess. The video is a little bit longer because I included all the mistakes I made and then stick around to the end of the video, I actually show the proper fixes and how you could try and replicate that if you wanted to make your own design. But when you build the base of something with the design of another pre-made playset going on top and then you keep building up you drastically change as you go up from the original design so when i took off the flag in this deck it really threw a monkey wrench into this i know this is an old man problem but laying on my side on my elbows and my shoulders for extended periods of time becomes a little bit painful after a while my shoulders would lock up i hear creaking and groaning i felt like i was 60 like, guys, we can't do this design anymore. So all the small rooms, the arms in the gallery, they're all down here, which meant there was also an overhang under it. So Dom from one year ago, why did you make this one more narrow than the other one? What it's created when I flip this upside down is now I've got this huge overhang. This side's fine. That side, not so much. And there's the next deck at seven feet long and two and a half feet wide. We got some two by fours here for the interior beams. I'll cut those at 11 inches and seven inches. And then I've got a four by four here that I cut down the center for now two by four. And the saw table's freaking broken. I loved moving, just love it. So two by sixes, those will be our inner beams here. And it looks like time to start sanding this bad boy down. I'm gonna start with a grinder here and just take at it like I'm going at the club. Just kidding, I hate clubs. Also, I hate sanding. I would pay anyone to come to my house and sand. I absolutely despise it. All right, just some wood filler. I picked the worst, most naughty board that I could possibly find. Look at all this crap. So I just got to fill these in. I didn't notice the split when I was picking it out. So just filling that in real quick, letting it dry, and I'll smooth it out. Paint, paint, paint. Tastes so good. Warm in my belly. Paint, paint, paint. Interior beams just drying one side. It would have gone faster if I didn't have two kids come by and grab them thinking they were dry. So, you know, that's fun. Also, I got to clean up two kids' hands. Yay! All right, just a couple patches. I know that looks like really crap right now, but uh, it'll dry. It'll dry. Just a couple patches up. And fixing past Dom's mistakes here, now we have a proper two and a half foot by four foot board going on there, which matches the other one. The paint doesn't match. I'm just, I'm just gonna move on. Good enough. These are the two by, ooh, gross. That's a little bit better. These are two by four cut to 11 inches to give me a little bit of play height with my hands in here. Remodeling, I wanna keep these walls because I've been putting details in them so I had to rip them out and I fastened them with these tiny little screws. So I'm gonna use this grinder and just go to town trying to get these bad boys out of there. Packed away, you can see where the grinder burned into the wood there with this metal tool piece. Um, but who cares, because that no one will see that. Now, as much as I fault myself for the last design and why it was wonky, I remembered where I got the idea from and using support beams like this. It's actually from the Michael Mercer video where he propped up his USS flag and gave it like a whole nother underbelly. I have two by four like this because these were originally meant to line up to where the USS flag was with its built-in strut. I'll put the link to Michael Mercer and G.I. Joe Berg's video in the description. It's really easy. It costs you a little bit of plywood, which has gone up nowadays. Uh, it's not that hard and it really adds to your flag. Now, I'm gonna clean all this up. It's been, just, just don't worry about that. So these pre-made structures came out of the old ship. They're these kind of I or H pieces with walls. Um, I started making individual rooms in here. It's like an arms room all stripped down. But this is this actually acts as the support for the next deck. It'll go right on top of that. So all I need to do is just line these up, and then that'll be the walls that support the next deck. All right, I have a confession. I don't remember what rooms were on what side uh, and where they were. Oh wait, no, this guy was at the end, right? Ah, I don't know. 
As long as I've got some hallways to be able to play with, it's split through the middle of the ship here. And I can tell because I put these little lights and as long as I don't arrange anything like this, because once the deck goes on top, you just blocked off access to that room. Actually, that does kind of look cool with that short room like that. I wonder what that would look like. I may have been better off just scrapping this thing and building it from scratch. I, I don't know. <laughs> I revived this corpse. What was I? How did this not? Why is it so much more narrow? How did I do that? There's evidence of my philosophy of cut, 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 sometimes measure. This is clearly seven foot, and these are clearly eight feet. What was I thinking? Another little problem sit here. I designed those walls pre-built, and they went on the narrower deck, which means they're too shallow for this. So here's the backside. That's, uh, that looks like it's okay, yeah, sure, but look how much room there is. That is too much space for a room. This is, oof, a lot of room to fill in here. After a little bit of experimentation, these walls will not work. Um, the one on the right are the old walls, and the ones on the left are the new walls. So that little half-inch gap right there is just creating all sorts of problems. So I can't even adjust the inside and modify more walls because of those short ones. They just have a gap. I love them. I want to hang on them because they have pre-made structures inside them or pre-made shelves. I think I made a happy Bob Ross mistake here. So what it's created is this interesting little insert here. Kind of allows, I don't know, an extra shuttle. This wall can be removed. An extra shuttle come in here. E-frames maybe. I might put some ladders down there, interior. I don't know, it's kind of cool. And the guys can go up and down, which allows a little linear and three-dimensional play. Maybe it's a little happy mistake. There's kind of like this walkway in front of the fighter bay now. So despite it being really narrow, it does make a cool fighter bay. And the boys said they like the ledge on the outside, like where you're walking the outside of a spaceship. So I don't know, maybe I leave that design like that. Oh, I cut a bunch more walls. All the walls were cut at five inches. This is to give my big old fat hands some space when I reach into a room and I'm not grinding my knuckles against the ceiling to play. The deeper the room, the higher you want this to go, otherwise you're really gonna feel constricted. What I found with my plywood is that even though this is five inches and all the walls are even, this shouldn't be able to slide out because in theory, the board is straight and everything should be resting on top. But instead, I've got a couple loose spots in here where the walls slide out. That's okay, because that means that it's good pressure on all your other points. Now, the length of the walls is gonna vary. This is two and a half feet right in the spine of the ship right there. I did it on purpose because I wanted a center support. So as where it's critical that you standardize the height of all your walls, the depth is up to you. Oh, there's a the captain doing a tour of the ship. Quick, everybody look busy. The length of the walls is up to what you want your rims to be. You can see here, I've got a varying degree of different wall depths, and that's because I want some shallow walls to jump out where it creates a little wider access. I want some tight walls to go all the way to the edge. I would make multiple cuts from eight inch all the way to just a four inch one to a six inch, and that'll give you varying walls for your interior. Here you can see I did a little shallow two inch wall, and then I did a six inch wall over here, and I butted it right up to the edge because I want this passageway to be choked off where this poor little sci-fi guy is about to have a really bad day. Another new design feature is some of the walls are actually L-shaped and pre-made before I squish them between the ceiling and the floor. Ew, I see that gap and I see the dust stains. I I'll get it, okay? It's work in progress. This is kind of important. This is not sliding out anytime. It is bearing the entire weight of this ceiling and the weight of the rest of the ship right on top of it. There's no glue to fasten this thing here. It's just weight. The L shape also helps distribute that weight out, sort of like an inverse corner. The vehicle bay got a little bit taller too. Uh, I wanted to be able to fit things like the Rolling Thunder and I know it's a Paw Patrol vehicle, but how cool does it look for an exploration vehicle? Like, look at those wheels. Anyway, anyways, back on track. I not only raised it, but I also created a little V with these two by sixes here. What this did was give me a lot of support to carry the rest of the ship. So here it is, version two of the unnamed spacecraft. By the time we're piecing this thing together, I hope to actually have a name for it. Maybe I'll open up to the community to 
the vote, but I don't want a ship that's called Bodie McBoatface. I've seen what the internet can do. There's actually a lot more to go over, but instead of inundating you with a 30 minute video, I thought I'd break this up into pieces. So go ahead and check out these other videos and we'll cover some of the walls, some of the base, some of the rooms themselves, and I don't know, maybe this guy right here. Like, you know, who is he? What's his name? What's your story, fella?